Hey everybody, happy Tuesday evening. It is time for more Callus Draft Duel Round of 16. Uh, quite a few of the drafts ended up finishing today, which is fantastic. Uh, I, as the tournament host, obviously appreciate when it feels like people care and are taking it seriously and are getting things done ahead of deadlines. I really appreciate that. Uh, there are actually maybe too many drafts that got done today, which is a great problem to have, but I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to narrate all the drafts that completed today today on Tuesday. I just don't know that I have the time, but I did one this morning, and I have time to do at least this one right now, so why don't we start with this one, since you guys didn't get to see either of these players in the previous round on YouTube. In one corner, player one, the left, the red player, is Dice, also known as Quint. He is a former Callus tournament champion. He was part of the winning team in Callus Crew Challenge Numero Dos. And then on the other side, it is this guy, Mux, who you may not be familiar with, but he's actually not, like, super new. Uh, he was floating around in Mushi League and some other side tournaments for the past year or so. He can maybe tell me a little more specifically. Uh, but he's pretty good. For someone who you guys on YouTube have maybe not heard of yet, this guy's up and coming. This guy's pretty solid, and I think he should get picked very consistently in side tours and... Who knows what that could become. But in the meantime, this is the matchup. And obviously these guys both defeated somebody else in a draft in order to be here. So let's see what they want to do with this draft. As always, player one, Dice, is going to have the first ban. And he's going to take a different approach than a lot of people have. He's going to immediately remove Blissey, which I don't hate. But Blissey, by and large, has made it through most of the bands in this format. Now, most and consensus and norm and things like that mean absolutely nothing to Dice. Uh, as long as I've known him, he has been a very creative, march to the beat of his own drum, do things his own way kind of guy. And that very well may be the case here. He gets rid of Bliss. I'm sure he's got a strategy. I'm sure he's evaluating things from his own lens. And I'm not going to question him. Just in general, with preferences, he knows what he's doing, and like I said, he goes about things his own way. I just have to kind of call the draft as I see it, but I'm not inherently opposed to a Bliss ban. We'll see how he follows it up. So on the other side, and this makes sense to me, so with Blissey already banned and knowing that Dice has access to the first pick and could simply take this Mon, I think Raikou is a perfectly reasonable ban here. Because, like I said, Dice could just first pick it if this guy, Mux, who does not have the first pick, does not ban it out. And perhaps he doesn't want to play against that. Now, granted, if he does take Raikou, could you respond with, whatever, Snorlax and something else? Sure. But there's only so many special walls, and they usually get divvied up. It's very possible that you end up with at least one team, maybe even more than one, that's more vulnerable to Raikou than you would like it to be. So this guy, Mox, doesn't even want to play this game. Let's just just get rid of it. Don't want to do that. So here's a really weird ban. Uh, I think only Dice and Arctic out of the people in this tournament have done this so far. I'm not positive, but this is a very uncommon ban for the first round. Dugtrio. So some powerful stuff is going to get through because both Blissey and Dugtrio are not things that get banned all that often. So no matter what Mux bans here, you still have things Metagross, Snorlax, Skarmory, Tyranitar, Celebi, Zapdos, Aerodactyl, Gengar. Only one of those things is going to get taken out, and all the rest of that is still going to be in the pool. So you have things like Skarm and like Titar, for example, that have been basically permabanned, and that just won't be the case here. So we'll see how that changes the dynamic of the draft, but Dice taking out a couple specific Pokemon, I'm not sure... If he has a specific strategy in mind, or if it's just things that he thinks are powerful and shouldn't be there. But like I said, these are not super common bands that he's gone with. Certainly not together, never mind individually. And a lot of powerful stuff that is normally not available is going to be available. So we'll see what this guy Mux wants to do with that information. I mean, ultimately, like I said, he can only take one of those things out of the pool. And then he's just kind of at the mercy of what Dice wants to do with the rest of it. But it also means that when it gets to Mux, he's going to have two very powerful Mons, probably two things that would not normally be there that he could take right away. So of all the things to remove, and I think you could make great arguments for 
Titar, Skarmory, maybe Lax, but the one Mon that Mux does not want to play against, given what is available, is Metagross, which it's hard to argue with with how consistent it's been so far in the tournament. Uh, it's been the first pick very, very often when it makes it through bands. I can totally see why he wouldn't want that to be there. But obviously it means that Dice is going to get something really strong. And then it means that Mux is also going to come back with something really strong. Like I said, unusual bands. This is a unique draft unlike any other one up to this point, And I can't wait to see how it plays out. So with the pick of the litter, with the option of Skarmory, Titar, Snorlax, Gengar... All things that have been banned very often in this tournament, Dice is simply going to opt for Skarmory. Hard to fault him for doing so. I'm not convinced that it is broke broke the way that the consensus in this tournament seems to think that it is. I think you can just load up on Starmie, Fory, whatever jank spinners and Skarm is probably only really, really good if he can protect the spikes. But you yourself can pick or ban out Gengar, Dusclops, whatever, and make it much harder to do that. So perhaps this match will test my theory. Skarm is good, there's no doubt, but I'm not convinced that it's insane the way that people think that it is. Let's find out who's right. This match will be one of the few opportunities that we've had to contribute to that sample size because it almost never makes it through the bans. So very powerful retaliation here. Zapdos and Tyranitar. Very hard to question those picks either. Zapdos has been first picked in many drafts, and Titar has been not available to first pick in many drafts because it's been banned out a hell of a lot. Uh, the general strategy so far in the tournament seems to be in the very early picks, just take the most broken things, and then around mid to late first round is when people start focusing on counters, and pretty much from there on out, it starts becoming about counter drafting your opponent. So Dice, with quite a few options, again, with, with very powerful things. Snorlax, Celebi, Aerodactyl, Gengar, a lot of power still on the board. Mux is going to get power on the way back. There's just so much strong stuff that made it through bands this time around. Uh, he's going to opt for Celebi and Swampert. The Celebi pick is interesting. Uh, I guess you could make an argument that it's reasonable against both Zapdos and Tyranitar, but it's not necessarily insane against either one. It could lose to either one, depending on the sets, but just at base value, it is going to be at least decent against these, uh, and it's also a special wall that isn't really fucked by sand the way that the Snorlax would be if you were to take that into a T-Tar drafter, and then a complementary defensive piece to the Celebi is Swampert, so like, I get it. Uh, normally, I would argue that this is maybe a bit of an early Swampert, and you could still make that argument, but you are looking at, opponent, at an opponent who just took Tyranitar, so if you're going to let that through, you're going to have to load up on many, many pieces throughout the draft. You're going to need Swampert, you're going to need two fighters, you're going to need Dawnfan, you're going to need Flygon, you're going to need all the help you can get. So start right now, there's Swampert. Has good synergy with Celebi and obviously is going to be good against the Titar. But like I said, a lot of those broken mons are still available. And two of them are going to be taken right now. Snorlax Salamence, really, really good. Uh, obviously with the Snorlax and the Titar being on the team of the same drafter, he's just going to split that up and put them on different teams. So we know guaranteed that Snorlax is going to be in a sandless game. Uh, Ments, hard to argue with. Is it better than Gengar? Is it better than Arrow? Hard to say. Uh, very often so far in this tournament, Salamence has been met immediately with a Milotic counter pick. Now granted, Milotic is not exciting into Zapdos and into Snorlax, and it's only okay into Titar. That being said, I would probably still take it if I were Dice, but it's also hard to pass up on like Gengar Arrow on the other end. Uh, it really does change the dynamic a lot when it is not the standard bands and when some things that are possibly, air quotes, not as good as the top mons, like Blissey and Dugtrio. When that stuff gets banned instead, it really does change the way the first round of the draft looks. So if this draft looks a little different, and it certainly does to me, there is a reason for that. And I'm super curious to see where it goes. So Dice, not surprised at all, cannot resist the temptation. I mean, how do you pass up here? Gengar Arrow, 
are probably the two best things available. It's really hard. I mean, it's tempting to take the Milo into the men's, and there's definitely an argument to be made that Mux should now just take Milo for himself to prevent his opponent from doing that. It's also good into the Swampert. So, and it's decent against the Skarm. You could just sit in on it for a while, refresh away the Toxic, hit it with Surf, whatever. Uh, I think Milo would be a very sensible pick. He also doesn't have a water yet, so it just makes a lot of sense to me that Mux might take that there and not give Dice the ability to take that. But I don't fault Dice here for not taking the Milo tick. It's really hard with these two dangling out there to not grab them. And obviously a very, very powerful five to start things off for Dice. But a damn powerful four as well for Mux, as is often the case. So we'll see how he wants to respond. This is probably the only opportunity that he's going to get, Mux. If he wants my Lotic, he's got to take it now, because clearly, otherwise, Dice is either going to take it or ban it. But there's absolutely no way that it's going to get through to round two. So if he wants it, he has to take it right now, and he's going to pass up on it. So as far as I'm concerned, my Lotic is gone. Window of opportunity has closed. Dice will for sure either take it or ban it. Instead, Mux is going to opt for Starmie and Fori in one fell swoop. I think this is wise. These are both very viable mons in their own right. They're both good against Skarmory that we already know is there. And they're arguably, maybe Claydol, but these guys are arguably the two best spinners in the format. So you're doing multiple things at once. You're taking a Spiker, you're taking two spinners, you're taking things that are good against Skarm, and you're taking two things that are the same role in one go, which is a strategy that I think it should be the standard in the format. That's what you should be doing. So I like the picks there, but like I said, the trade-off is my low tick is absolutely gone. It's just a matter of if Dice wants it and takes it, or if he simply bans it out, but that Mon is absolutely not going to make it through to the second round. So now Dice has the option, like I said, of do I want my low tick, or do I want to simply ban my low tick? And he decides that he wants to take my low tick, which I think is wise. He's going to go Charizard Milo. Uh, a lot of people very high on Charizard in this format. Can't blame them. Uh, it's not incredible into Zapdos Starmie. And it is obviously very vulnerable to T-Tar. But it's got play against everything. Good against Fori. Can throw focus punches on Lax or T-Tar. Keep them off guard. None of these things. Zapdos doesn't exactly switch very well into a Fire Blast. And likewise, you can customize the hidden power. So if you know the Mence is coming, you can go HP Ice, whatever. Uh, Charizard is just always a threat in this format, and there's only a handful of true counters to it, one of which might be this Milotic that just got taken, so very, very strong draft for both guys in this opening round. Uh, the teams look even more jacked up than they normally do because of the way the bands went, and super excited to see the way that this proceeds, keeping in mind that... It's going to be now Mux with the first ban, and then Dice, and then Mux, and then Dice, and then Mux is going to have the double pick to kick off round two. So this guy Mux, with the bans, he's going to take Vaporeon out of play, which is a bit of a head-scratcher for me. I feel like he would want Vaporeon for himself, but he, he's obviously not planning on picking it, or he wouldn't have banned it, but... I don't know. He doesn't have a bulky water unless you want to count Starmie. It's good against the Charizard that was just taken. It's not bad against Swampert. It's not bad against Celebi Skarm. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like he would would have wanted to take the Vaporeon. I can see why he wouldn't want Dice to take it, so he might be banning it to deprive his opponent. But, like, I don't know. Dude just took Charizard. He's got an Aerodactyl. You need all the bulky water help you can get. Uh, I think I would have leaned towards taking the Vaporeon rather than banning it. So I don't know that I agree with that decision, but he obviously has a reason. And there's obviously something in his mind that he's intending on taking that is not a bulky water. And we'll see what that is once we get back around to the picks. Uh, but in the meantime, Dice wants to not get blown out by both Spiker Spinners, one of them already in the hands of his opponent. So he's not going to allow them both to go there. And he's going to take Cloyster out of the pool. Fine and well. This guy, Mux, is going to come back with the Metacham ban, uh, which makes sense. You are the Snorlax T-Tar drafter. You obviously want fighters to not be there, and Metacham in particular, instead of many of the other fighters that learn crappy HP Ghost, has actual Shadow Ball and is a threat to Starmie as well. The other thing is, unlike, say, Machamp or Heracross or whatever, where Starmie can just outspeed them and click Psychic, 
Metacham neutral to Psychic rather than weak to it, so it doesn't really work there. So I get the logic on wanting fighters in general out if you are this guy Mux, and specifically which fighter is worst for you. It probably is Metacham, so that ban more so than the Vaporeon, I understand. And Dice is going to ban out Smeargle, which is a very early ban, but he has a clear strategy as well. He's banned out Double Spiker here. He already gave his opponent the Fory. He himself has the Skarmory, so they're one-to-one -one on Spikes, and he's trying to get the good Spikers out of play, possibly worried that Mux could do something with the double pick, like Cloyster Claydol or something to that effect, and just dominate the Spikes War in one fell swoop, so... Probably viewing Smeargle as a spiker, plus it's just general cheese, fast spore, can be can BP, damn near anything, etc. But probably just viewing it as a spiker, he's going to take that out of play. And now the spikers are a lot more modest. There is still Glalie, for example. But a lot of the better ones are already out of play, whether they've been taken or banned out. So now we go to Mux. I've got to know, what was the plan? You didn't want the Vaporeon, you didn't want a bulky water. What did you want? What were you holding out for? And he's going to go for Registeel plus Jolteon. I'm fine with these picks. I still don't know that I would have banned out a bulky water, but I think it is as simple as he had his heart set on these Mons and he didn't want his opponent to take the Vaporeon. Therefore, in his mind, it had to go. Uh, but the reason for me that these picks make sense, so starting with the Registeel, first of all, you can never get enough Rock Resists. Right now, he is sorely lacking in that department. He doesn't have any. This is his first one, so got to do that. Uh, certainly against the Aerodactyl specifically, you want that. And then it's just a good special wall in a, a draft where they are very much drying up. Basically, it is Regice and Chansey as the premier, if you will, if you even want to count Chansey, special walls that are still available. And everybody else already spoken for. Jolteon, pretty obvious. Electric Week, Electric Week, Electric Week, Electric Week. And then, of course, you can tailor the hidden power to be whatever you want. It's faster than Gar, can outspeed it. If they get into a race, you can also T-wave it, etc. Jolteon, I mean, I, I think highly every time someone picks Jolteon. You can tell my own preferences and biases here. I think Jolteon is really good in this. Not everybody agrees with me, but I really like the Jolteon pick and think it makes a lot of sense. So how about these picks on the other side? So to protect his own Skarm, presumably, it's also a Bolt Beam Resist, but we have not seen a lot of Magneton whatsoever. And here it is pretty damn early, and he's also going to grab Claydol here. So starting with the more obvious pick, the Claydol. So uh, best spinner available? Absolutely. Rock Resist against an opponent who has T-Tar, and also Electric Immune against a dude who has double Electric in Zapdos and Jolteon. So to me, the Claydol pick makes perfect sense. The Magneton is a little bit more interesting, but I think it actually makes a lot of sense and is actually really brilliant. Now, granted, could he have let it go later? Do I think that this guy, Mux, was about to take Magneton super soon? Like, probably not, but at the same time, there is a Skarm on the other side, so maybe you don't want to chance it. Uh, but the reason that I like the Magneton pick so much, so double duty here. So you do have the chance to randomly just trap the Fortress and kill it with HP Fire, done and done. But it's also a Bolt Beam Resist. This is actually defensively very, very good against the double Electric here with the Zapdos and the Jolteon on the other side. And if they switch over and go like HP Fire or something to target the Magneton, sure. But then... You're bad against Swamper. You're bad against whatever else he might draft in the future. So he can just configure the teams in such a way where there's you, you, just, you can't have all the hidden powers. If you've got what's good against A, it's not good against B and C. If you got what's good against B, it's not good against C and A, etc. Uh, the Magneton, like I said, I think is underrated as a defensive option with the Bolt Beam Resist against the two electrics. It does not necessarily have to be played the way that it gets played in OU. It isn't just a Skarmory Trapper. I think building it very defensively with a lot of bulk, with Protect, with Toxic, whatever, as a Bolt Beam Resist is super duper viable. And yeah, especially when you yourself are the Skarmory Drafter, I dig it. I can support that pick and I get why it was made. So on the other side, Hariyama here, Double Duty. And then Moltres. 
So Hariyama is not only just a good Pokemon and something that you just want in general, but you also really need Rock Resist, so there is his second one. And crucially, as we discussed with Metacham, you don't want fighters against you. You've got Titar Snorlax, you now picked up Registeel, fighters are an offensive threat to you, so a good way to prevent your opponent from taking them is to take them yourself. And he needs the Rock Resist, like I said, so Hariyama checks a lot of boxes, and I get why it was taken here. Moltres, always a threat against Skarm, Celebi, Swampert, that kind of thing. Very difficult in general, other than maybe Melotic for dice to switch into. Uh, Firebirds, Moltres, and Charizard, they function actually pretty differently, but they've both been highly valued and commonly either picked highly or banned in this tournament so far, and I think there's a damn good reason for that. Like I said, with Milo on the other side, it's not perfect, but if you catch it in the non-Milo matchup, it's a threat to whole heck of a lot of this stuff, and even in the Milo matchup, maybe spikes are down. Maybe you just roar it away. Maybe you just hit it with Toxic. Maybe you've got a hidden power that's super effective against it. Milo's good against it, but it's far from guaranteed. Moltres is very threatening in this format, and both of these picks make a lot of sense to me. So, Gyarados taken here. Generally, really good Mon in the format, though he is drafting it into the Zapdos drafter. And then Heracross as well, which I think is wise. Uh, not only is it strong, but as we discussed with fighters, fighters seem pretty good in general into this guy Mox's draft. Uh, and it's got the same appeal as Metacham in that it can really meaningfully hit the Starmie without having to resort to crappy HP Ghost. It can just nail it with Megahorn, which is almost always just going to be a one-hit KO. And then, yeah, I mean, Gyarados is just good in general, like I said. Maybe a little bit weird into... Zapdos, Salamence, Starmie, a couple other things on the other side, but it's just a good mod in this format. It doesn't have that many counters. One of the better counters, uh, once the Skarmory and the Zapdos are out of play, is loading up on Bulky Waters, which currently this guy Mox is very much not doing. He still, unless you count Starmie, has none of them. On the other side, one of these picks makes a lot of sense. One of them, pretty funky. Here's the one that I think makes a lot of sense. Another Rock Resist. You need another Rock Resist. It makes sense. I'm down with the Flygon. Good mod in this format. And makes sense into a lot of what is going on on the other side. Other than boom and status moves, Claydol can't touch it. It obviously threatens the Magneton. It can be faster than the Heracross and have HP Flying or Gust or what have you. Rock Resists in general are good. It also has Rock Attacks against Charizard, against Aerodactyl, what have you. I'm down for the Flygon, but the other pick... A Jinx here. Interesting. Why Jinx? Um, I'm not clear. I, I guess he he might be looking at it and just going like, you know, he's actually pretty vulnerable to offensive ice and psychic. Can't I hit Celebi super effectively? Can't I hit Gar super effectively? Can I put the Milotic to sleep? Can't Aerodactyl not really switch into me? Can't I hit Claydol super effectively? Can't I hit Heracross super effectively? He might be looking at these specific Mons on the other side and be like, you know what, he's pretty vulnerable to this dude just as an attacker. I think I can do some damage with this if I get it in the right matchup. It's interesting. It feels a little bit early. I'm not... It's hard without me having a list in front of me as to what else is available. I wonder even if the Jinx is good. Because there's always going to be a lot of things that are good because there's just so many Mons and there's just so many options. I don't question that it's good. But there's going to be 10 things that are good in any given situation. The format isn't taking something that is good. The format is taking the optimal thing, taking the best thing in any given situation. So I'm not clear if Jinx is that or not. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. We haven't seen enough Jinx yet to really, really know. But it's definitely an offensive threat against Dice's team. So see how that plays out. Uh, one Mon that this guy mucks interestingly allowed through during all of this and i don't know that i would have allowed it through but he might be afraid of taking another fighting weakness is reg ice which is going to get scooped up by dice here uh he's also going to go for kingdra and then like i said reg ice with the final pick for dice of the second round uh reg ice just makes a lot of sense to me bolt beam pretty damn good against what's going on over here flygon hates it starmie hates it mens hates it zapdos hates it jolteon hates it 
Uh, definitely a big Reg Ice fan, and like I said, one of the premium special walls in the format, which currently Dice is kind of lacking. He has only the Celebi if you want to view that as a special wall, so perhaps a much-needed addition in that department as well so he doesn't get run over by special threats. And it also makes sense into the Jinx that was just taken. Yes, it still has to worry about Lovely Kiss, but beyond that, it's going to wall the Jinx pretty comfortably most of the time. Uh, Kingdra, I'm very polarized about in this format. It really depends on the matchup. Uh, sometimes I feel like it really underperforms and does a whole lot of nothing, and it really doesn't have a lot of set diversity either. But there are times where it just comes in, clicks Rain Dance, and the opponent just doesn't have anything they can do about it other than throw things at it over and over and over again until the rain runs out. Uh, I can see the merit for Kingdra here. It can get ahead of and then one-hit KO. Things like Salamence, things like Flygon, things like Moltres. It can even, in a pinch, become faster than, say, Jolteon, and then try to kill that with a rain-boosted Surf or Hydro Pump or what have you. So I could see situations where the Kingdra would be good. I can also see situations where it's like Kingdra against Lax or whatever, and it's not so good. But all in all, the special wall's a little bit sketchy for this guy, Mox. He's got Lax and Registeel, and I don't know that Registeel really beats Kingdra. So I can see it being a threat, and I can see why he would value that here. So this guy, Mox, makes what I would say is at least one, if not two, defensive picks. He's going to go Ludicolo Weezing. Uh, I could totally see why he would take the Weezing here. Now, granted, he would have the option to ban it in the next round if he just didn't want Dice to have it. So he obviously sees use for it himself, which I can agree with against Heracross and Gyarados, for example, on the other side. And it's not awful against Aerodactyl either. Uh, but another reason to take Weezing is because it's really good against Lax and you want to protect your own dude. And in the same vein, Ludicolo, not exactly a Lax counter, doesn't exactly want to switch in to returns or body slams or what have you. But anything with Leech Seed is good against Lax, so you get a little bit of value there. And then there are a couple Waters on the other side. Certainly Ludicolo is good against non-toxic Swampert. It can also be a threat against Claydol. It can hold up pretty well against Regice, Milotic, what have you. So I can see the value in Ludi here. Uh, and the picks, yeah, the pick makes sense, like I said. Uh, without having a list in front of me as to what is still available, it's hard to know if these were optimal picks, but I can tell you that in my mind they are certainly sensible picks. So now we switch back to Dice, and we got the final round of bans from both players. Dice wants Breloom out of there. I don't know if it's just a coincidence that he has back-to-back -back Spore bans, if he just thinks that move is too strong, or if there's something specific here. Uh, oddly, it feels to me like Breloom is stronger into Mux than it is into Dice, but he may see it differently. But either way, he doesn't want to play against that Mon, and he takes it out of the fold. This guy, Mux, is going to respond by banning Dusclops, which is interesting. Uh, Dusclops generally is to protect your spikes, but I don't know. Neither player is, like, crazy spikes heavy since the Smeargle and the Cloyster... Both got banned. I mean, there are still spikers in the field. Like I said, Gladol, uh, Gladol, geez, it's like the baby of Glalie and Claydol. Glalie is probably the best one still available, but there is Claydol, the spinner, on the other side, but that is currently the only spinner for Dice, and then there are two spinners for this guy, Mux, but like I said, neither guy went insane with spikes. There's just one spiker a pop at the moment, and Dice, I think, wants to keep it that way. By banning out these spikers. So it's weird. I mean I don't. The Dusclops could partially be to protect your Snorlax. But. I don't know. Is Dusclops that crazy on Dice's team? Maybe if you throw it on the Skarmory team. I'm not sure about that ban. I don't hate it. But I wonder if that's the best thing. We will. We'll go from here and we'll see. If in hindsight I go. Ooh that's really good. Maybe you should have banned that instead. Uh, but for now, that's what it is. Dusclops is out of play, and the theme is going to continue for Dice. He just does not want spikers or sleep inducers. All three of these have sleep moves, and two of them have spikes, and then you add this guy in the fold. Uh, out of his last four bands, three spikers, three sleep inducers. Does not want to play against any of that. Roselia taken out of play for Dice. And then this guy, Mux, is trying to, I guess, cut his opponent off of... Rapid spinners, but the question again is why aren't you taking this? Mux obviously does not value the bulky water for himself. He banned out Vaporeon and Blastoise rather than taking either of them, and he still doesn't have a bulky water, so he clearly 
does not value the bulky water nearly as highly as many others do. And he may be onto something. That might be fine and well. But, man, he's really going to have to look back and question himself if he ends up losing a game to the Aerodactyl, knowing that he could have had things like Vaporeon and Blastoise that he himself banned out of the uh, out of the play, out of the draft. Now, granted, the Blastoise, again, is a rapid spinner, and I'm fine trying to deny the good spinners from your opponent, but that only makes sense if you're going spikes heavy. And currently, as we've discussed, neither guy is doing that, and Dice is trying to make it as difficult as possible to do that by taking all the spikers away. So, uh, over to Dice now for the double pick. He's going to go for Venusaur and then go for Umbreon. I don't know that Umbreon has a specific use here. Umbreon has been picked a lot of the time into Gengar or into Mystery Bus or what have you. Uh, that is not the case here. He himself has the Gengar, so maybe it's a little bit of a protection pick in that regard. And then Mystery Bus is not in play. Alakazam is not in play, what have you. It's usually a counter into those kind of things. Uh, but it is a little bit of a special wall. Dice may be looking at his own squad and being like, you know... I could probably use a little bit of special help. So this is probably alongside the Celebi and the Regice, his third air quotes special wall, if you want to count Celebi. Uh, the Venusaur is interesting. It might just be uh, a little bit of love against the Titar and against the Lax. All Leech Seeders are good against Lax, so he's got two of them now. Might pick up a third as we go, though he did ban two, I guess three, if you want to count Smeargle, of them out. Uh, and it's also, again, good against the Electrics. Anything that resists Thunderbolt is going to be good against Zapdos and Jolteon, so I don't hate the Venusaur. Umbreon, like I said, a little random, but if he thinks it's just the best special wall available, so be it. That is going to be the pick. Unsurprising with the things that this guy, Mux, has been banning. He's probably been thinking about this and setting it up all along. He's going to finally take Glalie. So, looking at the Rapid Spinner situation... Two of the better ones on Muck's team. The other one that's good is on Dice's team, but that's just one guy. And then Dice did him a favor and banned out the Cloister. And then this guy, Mux himself, banned out the Blastoise. So he's setting up a little, a little bit more Spikes action. He still only has the two Rapid Spinners, so he's not absolutely definitively winning the Spikes War as of now. But he's going to give himself a little more play. Glalie's good. Definitely a fan of the pick. Houndoom, I like into Gengar. That also makes sense to me. You can't guarantee that you get that matchup, but it's really good if you do. And it's just a general threat into Celebi, into Magneton, into Venusaur, into Regice, what have you, into Skarmory. Uh, these picks make a ton of sense. Really like the Houndoom grab here. And I think the Glalie very well may have been contested sooner rather than later by Dice if you don't take it here. So I think it was wise to grab that. I don't know that it would have necessarily been around that much longer and case in point by the next picks here by dice so camera up we'll get back to uh but the fact that he is going to just immediately take oma star here i think is a pretty good example that he probably would have taken glaley if that had been there because glaley's just the better spiker maybe Dice has this, like, janky special offense, Swift Swim team going or whatever. He does have the Kingdra if he's trying to go the Swift Swim route. But, and Omastar does have really high special attacks, so maybe there's something to it. But it's hard for me in my mind to envision it as something other than a Spiker. That's what I think it's going to be. If Dice changes it up and goes, like I said, Swift Swim offense, special offense, fine. But I think it's just a Spiker, and I think had this guy Mux not taken Glalie, this Omastar very well may have been Glalie instead from Dice's perspective. So it's good on Mux that he grabbed it when he did. Uh, the camera up, I don't think, has seen a lot of love in this tournament, but it makes so much sense here. Dugtrio, biggest counter, gone. A lot of the bulky waters banned out. In fact, his opponent doesn't have any, unless you count the Starmie. And again, very, very good against the double electric, and it also randomly threatens Fortress, threatens Titar, threatens Registeel. I think this is the perfect time to take a camera up, so I actually really love that pick from Dice. I think it's super heads up, and I think he's going to get pretty good value out of it in most games. I think the camera up will absolutely make one of the teams, and I think it's going to be pretty good. So, interesting here. So, our Maldo. And then Hypno, generally, 
Armaldo has been picked against Snorlax, and maybe that's part of the reason that this guy Mux takes it here to protect his own Snorlax. He also may view it as the best rapid spinner still available, and he wants to make sure that he gets a third one. Uh, it could be as simple as that. Uh, if it randomly threatens the Celebi or the Claydol or anything else, great. But I think the primary purpose here is to get what he views probably as the best spinner available and bonus points help protect his lax because Armaldo is a lax counter pick. Hypno, I'm not so sure about. Hypno is generally picked against things like Breloom, like Roselia, like Smeargle because you can't spore it. The only sleep user, I believe, on the other side, again, not counting stupid Hypnosis from Milo and Gengar, the only reliable sleep user is the Venusaur. I don't know that it's going to come up that often. I don't know that Hypno is that great. If he also thinks he needs a special wall, then Hypno could play that role. And it is a versatile Mon. It does have a pretty good move pool. It does have Wish. It does have Baton Pass. I don't hit, hate Hypno as an in general, but it's usually viewed as a counter pick, and I don't think that's the way it is being utilized here. Uh, Dice on the other side is going to go for Mystery Bus. Pretty ballsy into a Houndoom Drafter. And also Chansey. Chansey makes a lot of sense. If he feels like he still needs a little bit of special help, then this is really, really late for a Chansey. There's no reason not to grab it. And I think it very well may end up being decent for him. Mystery Vest, I'm not as sure. Uh, it does probably stop Fori, so it does have use in that matchup. I don't know that it stops Armaldo. If Armaldo has, like, Swords Dance, HP Rock or something, that is going to kick the crap out of Mystery Vest. Noting that Mystery Vest cannot learn Will-O-Wisp the way that many of the other ghosts can. And then, I don't know if it really stops Starmie either. It can have a lot of special bulk and have like Thunderbolt or CM or whatever. So it has some play against Starmie, but it doesn't really want to be hit with T-Wave. And Starmie can power through it with Hydro Pumps or what have you. So, And like I said, there's also the Houndoom on the other side. So I'm not so sure about the Mystery Vest pick. It does have a little bit of value against the Lax, and it makes it run Shadow Ball. Otherwise, it probably doesn't hit Mystery Vest. So there's that. But I'm not sure how good the Mystery Vest is going to be into the team that this guy Mux has brought. TBD, not sure if he's going to end up actually bringing the Mystery Vest, but I'm not sure how good that pick is going to be. And the Chansey pick, like I said, I do like. So, uh, on the other end, we're going to see Marowak and Sceptile here. Let's see. Well, he's not. Uh, he does have the Agilipass combo from Zapdos to Marowak, but otherwise I don't see anything too, too cheesy that he can do with it. But it doesn't necessarily have to be run on cheese squads. I'm just I'm looking at the team from Dice, and I don't know that Dice has too many of the kinds of Mons that you really want Marowak into. I envision it more against, like, a super fat, stally, do-nothing team that doesn't have a lot of offense, where Marowak has a million opportunities to do its thing. And I don't know that that's really what Dice has here, so I don't know that I'm that excited about the Marowak. It's obviously always a dangerous Pokemon, and that's without the fact that Zapdos and Jolteon can pass agility to it. So, like, there is some cheesy combo-tacular possibility there, but... Just looking into the configuration on the other side, I'm, I'm just not that excited. He's got he's got Intimidate, he's got Gar, he's got a bunch of things that outspeed it. He's got Milotic that can tank it a little bit. He's got Skarmory that can tank it a little bit. Uh, he's got a lot of things that threaten it offensively. He's got a lot of things that are on the faster side, certainly that are faster than Marowak. Eh. We'll see if he ends up using that pick, and we'll see if he ends up getting value out of it. But like I said, not that excited about the Marowak. Sceptile I like. Uh, I don't know that it blows me away. It's not great or awful against Dice. Obviously, it has play against things like Swampert, Milotic, Olmastar, Claydol, Chansey. So I can see where it could be good. It's a pretty customizable poke. So if you don't bring it in game one, you can go back and mess with it in game two. You can make it physical. You can make it strictly special. You can make it a hybrid of both. It gets Focus Punch, Leech Seed, Roar, all sorts of funky stuff. You can do a lot with the Sceptile. I think it's just a general good mod. I don't know that it is... Amazing nor terrible against what Dice has, but it's just a good Pokemon overall. I can see it making or not making a team, but I think Sceptile is a totally viable Pokemon in this format. Dice is going to take another Ghost here, so he actually does end up with three in his draft. 
And then he's going to take Dawn Fan as well, which I think is a really, really good last pick. I'm kind of surprised he didn't take this earlier, to be honest. Uh, not only is that going to give him another spinner, which he needs, but it's also really good against T-Tar. You very much want, against Dawn, want to get Dawn Fan into T-Tar. Any physical set of T-Tar, Dawn Fan is pretty darn reliable. And if you could force the T-Tar to instead be a possibly inferior mixed or special set, then that is a win in and of itself. Uh, Sableye among the ghosts is one of the better ones against Lax, but I think even more crucially, the plan is to try to protect the spikes. And if he wants it, he now has the ability to put a ghost on each team. Uh, the Dawn fan pick, I'm really surprised. Like I said, he didn't take that earlier, but really, really good last pick there that will almost certainly make one of the teams. And like I said, in an ideal world for him, He's going to try to get, get a blah, 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 try to get that against the Tyranitar because it is quite strong against that Pokemon. And finally, super duper bang for the buck. Dragonite is an amazing last pick. Shocked that it's still available and would say damn near 100% it should end up making one of the teams. It's super versatile, does it all, great move pool, great stats. Huge, huge Dragonite fan, and I think getting it literally with the last pick of the draft is an absolute highway robbery level of steel. Big Dragonite fan, big grab there. And really, in this draft, it just demonstrates that all the way down to the very last pick, it's easy to lose focus, it's easy to stop paying attention. It really, really matters. I think both the Dawn fan and the Dragonite were incredible value, and I think both of them are going to end up making the team. So... Uh, who won? Man, it's phew, it's hard to say. Um, if I absolutely had to pick a winner, I'm going to give the advantage to DICE. Uh, I think the teams are comparable. I might like DICE's configurations a little bit better. Uh, but I think that DICE has come on strong with the spinners and the ghosts at the end and may win the Spikes War. I think that he has dealt with the double electric on the other side pretty well. I think picks like Claydol, Venusaur, Camera up down the stretch, Chansey down the stretch, all make a lot of sense and are going to make those electrics on the other side not as good as they otherwise could have been. Uh, and I think the Dice has the generally faster and more and more offensive squad, but not by an F ton. Uh, you know, there's Zapdos, Jolteon, Flygon, Jinx, Moltres. There's plenty of fast stuff on the other side as well. So the speed is comparable, uh, but I think... Dice's teams are going to lean a little bit more aggressive than this guy's Mux's teams will. Um, there's a lot of things about Mux draft that I like as well. Uh, I do, I mean, Zapdos, Titar, Lax, Mance is just an incredible first four. So he obviously just has raw Mons quality. Uh, I think the Houndoom, if it lands in the matchup, I mean, not just, not just the Gengar anymore. I think the Houndoom is going to be incredible for him. If it lands against the Gengar or the Mystery Bus, I think the Houndoom is going to be really, really good. And he very well might win a game just because of the Houndoom. I think that is just going to be one of the key MVP mons for him. Uh, I think the Jinx can be a real threat if he gets that in the right matchup. Uh, he's got the possibility to spam Para or to pass Agilities or whatever to Hariyama or to Marowak and let those go wild. So he's got ways to win there. And he's not so defensive and passive that he's giving his opponent a million opportunities. He definitely has ways to turn on the Jets and go offensive himself. I think both of these players, with most of their teams, are going to be offense-leaning. And I don't think there's going to be too, too much really hard stall here. Uh, so I don't feel super strongly about my prediction. But I do... I, like I said, I really like the way that Dice dealt with those electrics via his drafts. And I think he made... A couple of pretty smart picks at the end. The Dawn fan I thought was great. Getting getting the late ghosts, getting the late spinner, I think made a lot of sense. The camera up pick I think was absolute money. And I'm going to give just a slight edge, also assuming, perhaps ignorantly, that Dice is probably the better player. I really respect this guy, Mux. Uh, I think he's got game. I really do. Uh, but Dice has been doing this for a long time. A lot of tournament experience. Uh, this guy, Mux, is good, but he's relatively new, and perhaps he can learn a thing or two from Dice, or, hell, maybe he'll teach Old Man Dice a lesson. Time will tell. Like I said, I think this is relatively even among the drafts. Uh, in other ones, I've been able to say, nah, I think it's going to be this guy. I don't feel super strongly this time about my prediction, 
but I'm going to say slight advantage to Dice. I'm going to predict Dice winning two games to one. But please, let me know what you guys think. You may see it completely differently, and I am super-duper open to that. I've already been wrong multiple times. Just the way it goes. Appreciate you guys watching, as always. Please consider hitting the like button if you've been enjoying the tournament, and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.